Great. So thanks, everybody. Hopefully you can uh, see my screen. Is that right? Yeah. Great. OK, so um, welcome, everybody. It's nice to uh, have the opportunity to to talk to you a little bit about um, the direction that um, I've gone in as part of my um, research journey and to kind of share kind of tips and ideas and have conversations with people about your your kind of thoughts and questions. Um, so my name is, uh, is Cathy Greenwood um, and I'm currently based in Sussex at the University of Sussex and the local NHS Trust. Um, so, I mean, just as a starting point, I wanted to um, begin by kind of talking about my, the starting of my academic career. Yeah. Um, so, oh, can you hear me? I thought I heard somebody else for a second then. Um, okay, so yeah, so I began my academic career back in 95 um, as a, um, a new PhD student in the Institute of Psychiatry at King's College London. Um, that was quite a decision in and of itself because I, right from the outset as a, even as an undergraduate, I was sort of, I suppose, struggling with that idea of, uh, or with the challenge around kind of, do I go into something more clinical or do I go into something more academic? And what I ended up deciding to do was to go into um, a PhD in the neuropsychology of psychosis being something that hopefully combined the two. Um, so I, I did that between 95 and 99. Um, one of the th thoughts that I had during the PhD was that although I was um, doing something that was clinically applied, there was a part of me that found it quite frustrating that I was just doing assessments and then people would say, you know, what happens next? And I would say, well, that's, that's sort of it really. <laughs> um, and I found it quite frustrating to not be able to then put something back into clinical practice to make a difference because it was a purely academic endeavour. So I then moved um, in 99 into a clinical psychology doctorate, um, also at the Institute of Psychiatry. Um, and as I say, the kind of rationale around that was in order to be able to do something that was more um, applied clinically, um, whilst also potentially um, allowing me to continue to do a little bit of um, research. Um, and then having finished the clinical psychology doctorate in 2002, I then largely initially became a full-time clinician. Um, I kept on doing little research um, and, and was in that role for about six years. Um, but I started to produce some papers. Um, I started to work co-supervising PhD students and clinical psychology doctoral students. Um, I got a couple of really small grants, so that was kind of local internal grants, which are available in Sussex as well, um, for, you know, small pieces of research over maybe six months or something like that. And the other thing was that I took the opportunity when it came along to join a large NIHR programme grant, one of the early um, programme grants as a co-applicant. Um, and I think that was what really kind of shifted things in terms of me then starting to move into something that was more like clinical research. Um, so, you know, tips to take from that, I suppose would be to take opportunities at the early stage of your career, notice and take opportunities that come along, you know, be a little bit flexible. So, I mean, the programme grant that I joined was not necessarily you know, it was in psychosis, which was my area of research. It wasn't necessarily my kind of dream research project, but it gave me lots and lots of opportunities and experiences. And, and you do sort of have to work at it initially. Um, well, you always have to work at it. Um, but, you know, bear in mind that, you know, if you're starting off clinically, you might need to be doing some additional work. You know, in, I know a lot of researchers who are doing things in it, you know, once a week on an evening or something like that to try and fit in that research to get started. So having got to that point, um, I'm then kind of in more of a kind of clinical researcher role. So I moved to Sussex in 2008 um, in, as an early intervention um, clinician in, in Sussex partnership. But I also kept a half day of research 
with the Institute of Psychiatry for the ongoing um, program grant and other kind of kind of smaller research projects. Um, and fairly quickly after that, I then took up a part-time clinical research fellow role within Sussex Partnership. Um, so that obviously, you know, I was saying initially you probably need to be quite flexible and quite um, focused to get research off the ground, particularly if you're in more of a clinical role. And equally, you know, if you're, you're in more of an academic role, you need to work quite hard to bring in the clinical side initially. Um, but, you know, that then paved the way for me to have some more dedicated clinical research time. Um, during that period, I, I published more papers. Um, I got some small grants through um, the Research Design Service Patient and Public Involvement um, funds, which are also available ongoing to support patient and public involvement consultations about grants, which I think are really important and can completely sort of enhance and even change the direction of the research that you're going in and make it much more meaningful for um, patients. Um, and then on the back of that, secured two Research for Patient Benefit grants supported by the RDS, who I think is, are fantastic, I have to say. Um, and, um, and also with colleagues at the Institute of Psychiatry. Um, and alongside that carried on with, you know, clinical psychology doctoral students, PhD students kind of helping to build um, that kind of track record. So I think the tips at that stage would be sort of once you've got some, you've started on a, on a kind of clinical or clinical researcher career, is to really think about negotiating. There was quite a bit of negotiation around me coming to Sussex, but still holding on to a, a part-time research contract at the Institute of Psychiatry. Um, and you're also, I, th I think the other important thing is to build on the contacts that you have. So initially I didn't have a strong track record in, in grant um, income, um, but I did have some colleagues who I've been working with in London who had a good, who did have a good track record. And I made it very clear in some of the early bids that they would be working with me and supporting me. And obviously research for patient benefit and some of the other um, sort of smaller NIHR fellowships and grant schemes specifically um, are focused on helping early career researchers to get that first step. So do build on the contacts that you have. Um, so in that early research role, I, start, I also started to build some of the kind of research infrastructure that might support kind of impact and dissemination, which again is really helpful from a, a grant perspective. So um, I set up Sussex Psychosis Research Interest Group, which is a partnership across the trust, the university and the medical school. Um, it's got um, strong patient public involvement. And it, the idea of this was to make this something public allow the opportunity for dissemination and impact back into clinical practice, raise the profile of, of Sussex psychosis research and sort of really foreground and encourage more cutting edge kind of research within the trust. Um, and then the kind of next step um, in kind of the last five years has been moving gradually. I feel like I've kind of been moving in a crab-like fashion from, from kind of academic into clinical and then back into academic again. Um, so in, in 2015, I took up a, um, a full-time clinical research fellow role in the trust um, because the research that I was doing was, was getting more and more busy. Um, and, um, and also started doing some of the more academic work within the university. And in 2018, I got a, a chair, so a, a clinical psych professor of clinical psychology role in the psychology department. And I think kind of, you know, critical um, research at that stage was, you know, once you've started to kind of build a reputation and um, started to kind of, you know, demonstrate that you can deliver on kind of small scale studies um, you can and you build on your kind of links you can start to um, become co-applicant or a site PI on larger multi-site projects 
So if you remember, that was something I did right at the beginning on, on the programme grant, but there are lots of opportunities for that um, in Sussex to be a PI on a grant to kind of help within, you know, say the R&D department locally um, to implement a, a research project that somebody else has already set up and learn some of those skills about running a trial, which then builds your track record then to allow you to, um, to secure additional funding. Um, it also allows you to kind of build kind of national collaborations and links so that when you get to a point where you want to put in for a larger grant, you've got a, a network of people who you can draw on. So, I mean, I would say that there are core people who I'm working with on a current large scale grant that are people who I've worked with independently at different times uh, on different projects around the country who've all come together into, into the one bid. So I think having, you know, a growing number of papers, successful smaller scale bids, use the smallest steps of funding to then pave the way for the next stage so that you, so that it, you know, it's clear that you've got a track record if, if, you know, NIHR, for example, have started to invest in something, you know, and it's gone well, then, you, you, you know, you've set yourself up to be in a stronger position for the next stage. Um, so I then in that, at that stage kind of got um, a large, um, just over one and a half million grant as a chief investigator, which linked into um, all of the um, Kind of collaborations that I built up over a period of time. Um, so it's running in nine NHS trusts around the country. Um, and I suppose the, the tips at that stage are sort of continuing to kind of strengthen your skills, to continue to learn. Um, I've had someone who, who's been acting as a mentor during that grant, who's got lots more experience than me. So continue to kind of keep building your strength but you at that stage you probably want to start focusing your kind of critical effort um and at the same time trying to kind of keep hold of your clinical and patient and public involvement links so that from an nihr perspective you're still doing kind of meaningful research that actually fits into the real life nhs which i think is really important um yeah and and just to kind of talk about a few kind of projects um the, this is the early youth engagement project, which in first episode of psychosis, which started with an RFPB bid and moved into health services and delivery research, which is the project that I'm working on now. And, you know, building on this, we've just got a, an applied research collaboration grant um, to identify people at um, greater risk of developing psychosis and adapt some of these resources to people who are at risk rather than currently having psychosis. Um, so you can just build on and kind of develop um, once you've got one grant, you can kind of keep working on that. So this started with an RDS PPI bid, it start, moved on to RFPB, it moved on to HS and DR. We've now got an, an uh, applied research collaboration grant. We've got lots of care applications and trusts involved, you know, and it, you know, the preliminary outcomes were successful. That's really important, obviously. It reduced disengagement by 10% in the pilot study, and we're evaluating the impact now on the main study. There were lots of qualitative feedback. So combining qualitative and quantitative data together can be really meaningful because different people hear and you know make use of different types of data um, um, to get funded. And the other thing I would say is people like products. I think if you can produce something as part of a a grant that's tangible, I think that's also quite valuable, kind of both from a research perspective, but also from a clinical impact perspective. So other projects that so we've, we've also looked at a project on uptake and implementation of CBT for psychosis, again, developing products, questionnaires, websites, implementing, evaluating. Um, and the, the, the research questions are kind of meaningful in terms of clinical practice, you know, some of the challenges that we're facing on a day-to-day -day, um, basis. Um, and PPI was really important here because initially I was thinking of um, using this as an opportunity to understand why clinicians don't offer CBT. And our service user said, well, actually, hold on a moment. We might not want it. You need to know why we might want it or not. Um, so, 
So thanks to them, it then became double the size um, and a very busy project, but really valuable. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think also kind of, I suppose, raising awareness of the value and impact that projects are making, both regionally and nationally, can be really helpful in then, in then kind of, you know, um, building kind of future collaborations, awareness of your research, um, the, the impact, and then securing more funding. So one of the projects I was um, a regional PI on, so not leading on, um, got a local um, research award. And yeah, and then kind of, you know, this is just kind of the, um, the current project where we're actually kind of looking at implementing in over a thousand new, in fact, now over a thousand new first episode psychosis service users, which has lots and lots of additional kind of papers that are coming out aside from the, the main ones. So there's lots of opportunity for kind of new kind of research build, bringing in, um, we've got a funded PhD student attached to this. And as I say, kind of additional funding now, now coming on the back of it. Um, and partnerships are also really critical. So, you know, lots of people um, and trusts and academics have all been involved. Um, and, um, you know, kind of, it's really helpful to kind of make sure that things are really accessible. So um, to clinicians and services. So uh, alongside kind of the research publications, we're kind of, you know, making sure that it's really clear to clinicians you know, how to implement something, kind of the resources, how to use things um, in a kind of really clear and meaningful way. And our kind of clinician and PPI links are helping us to do that. Um, so in terms of top tips, I think, you know, I've touched on these, but really kind of looking for and taking opportunities as they come along, certainly in the early stages of your career, there are lots of opportunities to get involved in research in Sussex through the Research Design Service, through um, the local NHS trusts and universities. Be flexible. Um, you know, it might not be that this is your ideal research question, but you can normally get involved in a grant and then shape something and add a questionnaire or something that you want to do that's your bit. And do be prepared to work at it in the first instance. Do kind of negotiate, learn and build contacts. You need to kind of, you know, sometimes do that in order to, to make sure research is kept in the foreground and then kind of, you know, really kind of maintain clinical and patient and public involvement links from NIHR perspective. I think it's really important that your research questions are important and meaningful. And you think about the impact, where is this gonna go next and how will it change services? So thinking about kind of relevance, think about the design of the project, think about the team who are gonna be involved, the value, PPI, and, and then the impact. Um, and you know you can also get involved in um, relevant psychology PhD studentships that can start to kind of build some of, and bridge some of that clinical psychology experience. Um, and you can also there are increasing numbers of clinical psychology training places. Um, that's another opportunity to build your clinical academic career. So I've got a few kind of points for discussion or question there that we could come back to later on in the session. Um, and that's all I was going to say for, for now. So I'll hand back to Claire.